I know it's been a while since I posted and that's definitely something I want to fix up this year. I know it's been a while since I posted and that's definitely something I want to fix up this year. Definitely something I want to fix up this year. This year. <laughs> Hello all and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're actually going to be giving you seven tips and tricks to improve your overall rollerblading slash inline skating abilities. Now these following tips and tricks are recommended for city slash urban skating. Hopefully that gives you a bit of context on where this video is coming from. Some of these tips and tricks are crucial for any type of skating so with that out of the way let's get straight into it and starting off with number one awareness of everything around you awareness is absolutely crucial as a returning sport and form of transport we need to try our best not to look selfish and inconsiderate the following things should always apply when you're skating you need to constantly know who's around you and what that involves is constantly looking around you you need to make sure you look before you cross you need to know who is behind you who's in front of you who's to your left who's to your right you need to know when stops are coming up you need to respect cars on the road Road, and you need to constantly look around and know where you're going. You need to know where everything is because it just takes that little amount of time for something really dangerous or really bad to happen. So number two, tools, items, and things that I take on every skate. Now there's one crucial decision you have to make before leaving your house and that is whether you want to take a backpack and take more weight with you or whether you want to have as little weight as possible and no backpack. Personally for me, I like to have as little weight as possible on me and that's why I'd recommend these pants here. Now when it comes to fashion sense i'm not going to say they look too great or anything like that and when it comes down to it you should wear what you want when you're skating the main reason i recommend these is because they are very efficient for skating and main reason being is because of this side pocket here which is absolutely amazing for holding your phone and your skate tool as i'll show in the videos here when we're talking about extra weight the good thing about these pants is that everything stays tight to your legs so nothing shakes around as you're skating and the reason i like that is because it doesn't affect any tricks i'm trying to do and it almost feels like there's nothing there so i'd highly recommend getting pants like these or getting pants or track suits that have pockets with zips on them. You should never skate around with loose pockets. It is so easy to lose stuff. I would stay away from things that don't have zip up pockets. Now, let's name the tools and items that I take on every skate. Starting off with number one, my phone. You should have your phone on you too. And the main reason being is your phone takes your calls. For a lot of you, it would play your music. And another important thing that a lot of you should be using as well is a fitness tracker. I would recommend using something like Strava, which is what I personally use. It's good for keeping up your overall distance that you've skated and some other health stats as well. So I'd highly recommend getting a health tracker. And while we're on the topic, if you go down in the description, you can join my Strava group. So that way we can build like a little community and see what everyone's up to. The second thing is a skate tool. The weird thing about a skate tool is a lot of people don't know where to put it while they're skating. And yet again, coming back to why I like these pants is because they fit nicely over the top of my phone. It is not going to stab my leg anywhere as my phone is protecting me from it. And this one that I personally got from Bayside Blades, this K2 tool. It's nice and small and it does the job. So it fits into my pocket perfectly and is not an annoyance at all. So I'd highly recommend getting a smaller tool like this one. I also recommend taking one on every skate you go because it's so important to make sure you have something to be able to fix up your wheels or change anything over if anything were to happen. The next and absolutely crucial thing is a form of payment. A lot of people these days have theirs on their phone. I personally haven't set mine up yet just due to laziness. So I I just take a credit card. You need something at all times to be able to buy something in an emergency. So I would absolutely recommend taking a form of payment somewhere, no matter where you go. You never know when you'll need it. Finally, a simple one, which is just my house keys. Another good thing about these pants is this back pocket here with a zip. It fits the card perfectly and it fits the keys perfectly. You zip it up, nothing moves, it's perfect. So yet again, I'd recommend these pants. I'll chuck a link in the description. So that way, if you want to get them, there they are. Another thing that I need on every skate I go on is music. I need something to block out the noise, which is sort of a controversial topic. Main reason being is we were talking about awareness before knowing everything that's around you. Now I've been skating long enough to the point to know what I'm doing and what's around me. This one here, I would only recommend to people who are on the more advanced scale of skating. Feel free to use music, but just be careful how you use it. It's a little one here. I skate mostly throughout the day. In Australia here, it's mostly hot and sunny, so I need sunglasses. The final thing is obviously what we'll talk about before, whether you want to take a bag or not. If you are going to use a bag, you need to use a bag such as this one here, something that sticks tight to your back and nothing that's overly bulky. That way it doesn't affect your skate. The last thing is water, dependent on where you live. In Brisbane, we have water taps everywhere around the city, so you're not really ever going to go more than five kilometers with 
without missing a drink. But for those who live in cities that don't have this pleasure, I would suggest taking water, especially if you're going to be doing long distance skates because keeping yourself hydrated is absolutely crucial and you need to be doing that. Number three, this one's a bit of a, a minor one, but stepping onto the grass. Now, what the hell do I mean by this? Let's explain. A thing I've seen quite a lot with people I skate with is when they're rather rolling onto grass or stepping onto grass, they're doing it in a way where they're not slowing down. They're still rolling very fast as they're going onto the grass. First thing you need to know if you're going to be rather rolling onto the grass or stepping onto the grass is you want to slow down as much as you can. A drag is always gonna be the most effective way to do this. Try and slow down as much speed as you can. And then from there, you obviously have your two options where you rather roll onto the grass or if you step onto the grass, dependent on the speed. We will start off with the rolling. Pretty much when you're rolling onto the grass, you need to bend at your knees and not be stiff like this clip here. And instead, be like this clip here. Just before you go onto the grass, bend at your knees. Most of your weight will be on your back leg, arms up, roll onto the grass smoothly. As for people stepping onto the grass, this clip here demonstrates what you shouldn't do. You never want to be running on the grass like this because all you're doing is running too fast and the wheel rotation is gonna keep you going. So an easy way to slow yourself down is to do the following here. I should also mention before I explain this is this is a bit more of an advanced tip. I would highly suggest practicing it at very slow speeds or even at standstill speeds because it is a little bit hard to learn but it is super effective. Basically, as you're coming onto the grass, what you wanna do is start off with your dominant leg and it's gonna be tilted at a 90 degree angle. This will instantly slow you down much faster as that way you're not going with the grass, you're going against the grass followed up by the other leg coming out wide. The dominant leg is then going to come back over the back leg and you're gonna do a constant motion of back and over. This one's only a simple tip, but I think it's really helpful if you do learn it and I would highly suggest using it. Number four, feet positions while standing still. Yet again, this is another simple tip that you've probably seen on a lot of tutorials. Basically, all you need to know is don't ever have your feet parallel and don't ever have your feet pointing in. You always wanna have them pointing out with the back wheels clamped together. Main reason being is if you wanna try this exercise here, if your feet are pointing outwards and any movement is made, you're instantly gonna start rolling. Same as if you're standing in a parallel position. If you have your feet pointed outwards and clamped together, you are not going to move. So this is just a simple little trick that you would have seen everywhere, but yet again, it's super helpful and hopefully you'll avoid making stupid mistakes. Number five, taking on avoiding or jumping over obstacles. The wonder of skating is you have multiple options when it comes to this. You can avoid these obstacles, you can roll over them, or you can jump over them. And that's the great thing about it. The thing is, you need to make a decision quickly before you're going to perform it. If you're going to be jumping over the obstacles, you need to be ready to jump over it. And if you're gonna be avoiding them, you need to figure out a way how you're gonna avoid them. YouTubers such as Bill Stoppard will always tell you to practice on this stuff. And I could not agree more. You should always practice stuff like manhole covers and blind spots. They're gonna help you get better at skating, but the more advanced you get, you wanna start mixing it around. You wanna sometimes go through them and you sometimes want to avoid them. So you need to practice both and that's super important. This leads nicely onto number six and that is bending and adjusting your body position for these obstacles. A big issue I see when it comes to rolling over blind spots or speed bumps or anything like that is body position. The main problem being is not bending at the knees or using your arms. Something I've mentioned in some of my last videos is people seem to forget they have arms while skating. I get it, It's you sometimes forget that it's there, but your arms are your balance meter. It helps you so much and it's gonna save you from a lot of things. So when you're first starting out and learning things, you really need to be using your arms more. As for your knees, you need to be bending down much lower over these obstacles. The stiffer you are, the less balance you're gonna have. If you bend your knees, you're going to be able to control your body and how your body reacts to the obstacles. Finally, what I would say is the most important if you're gonna be doing skating similar to me, and that is having a slide slash stop. Funnily enough, even some of the best skaters I know actually still use heel brakes, mainly being they don't wanna wear their wheels down. That's completely fine. I think that's absolutely a fine option. And if you guys wanna use heel brakes, feel free, that's great. As for those who want a very quick and effective stop, something like the magic slide is going to be the absolute best thing to learn if you're an advanced skater and for those intermediate skaters a power slide is going to be great to stop you 
from getting to these insane speeds or insane situations. Having a slide and a stop is so invigorating in the way that I can almost skate anywhere without the worry of not being able to stop at any point. I can pull up almost at any speed these days and almost anywhere. You need to be able to adjust to the situation you're in and having a slide and stop a lot of times will save you because you're going to be able to stop before that light or if a car pulls out you're going to be able to quickly adjust and stop having a slide and a stop is crucial you need to learn one i think all skaters should learn one whether they want to use a heel brake or not you need to have more than one option while skating and that's the end of the video a bit of a different one than usual but i just thought i'd make it just to switch things up and give some tips on things i've noticed other skaters do 